For the first time in 16 years, a new mayor is leading the way in Durham. Longtime resident and public servant Steve Schull gave up his council seat on December 4th to be sworn into his new position, a job he's been seemingly preparing for for most of his life. Hello and welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. Joining me today to talk about his new role is Mayor Steve Shule. Mayor, thank you so much for joining me and welcome. Thank you, Beverly. Wonderful to be here and uh, looking forward to it a lot. Congratulations. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's a, uh, it's, it's, a big, it's a big responsibility, but I'm looking forward to doing the job. Well, I was going to ask you, what is the biggest change between being mayor for all of a month so far, right, uh, compared with being a council member? There are several big changes uh, that I have to tell you I wasn't totally expecting, I have to be honest with you. Uh, one of them is uh, that the, uh, the number of people that want to see me, that want to meet with me, that want me to come cut a ribbon, that want me to come, uh, come down to their place of work and see what it's like, uh, that have an opinion to share, has, it's off the charts. Uh, and I really, uh, it was a lot when I was on city council, but it's phenomenally more now. And so trying to figure out how to respond to people, but, but, but also do it in a way that I can manage it is really hard. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the other thing that's, that you'll enjoy uh, that's been a really big change. People want selfies with me. Oh. And uh, <laughs> that has really been a lot of fun. I bet. Uh, yeah. Um, on Martin Luther King weekend, for example, when I was out, I probably went to a dozen different places, churches and people doing community service. And I think probably 50 people uh, I had my picture taken with. And uh, it's, it's great. It's, it's a real honor for people. Uh, for people to want to have their picture taken with you and uh, it's uh, I try to think of myself as representing the city in that role and mm -hmm. try to uh, give my biggest smile and say yes to everybody so but that that's been a lot of fun you know that speaks volumes about the kind of person you are though very approachable very friendly and the, the just the whole way you've set yourself the, your tone of your your being mayor and a council person people feel friendly toward you thank you well I hope that's true, and uh, I try to be as approachable as I can, and I think it, it does come naturally to me, and uh, I love being with people, and I love hearing what they have to say. I love hearing what people's ideas, I love hearing what their experiences are. Mm -hmm. So Mayor, you've said that racial and economic justice are themes of your life. Why is that? Well, I grew up during segregation. I grew up in a so small southern town, Lynchburg, Virginia. I was born in 1951. I'm 66 years old. So when I was growing up, I grew up in a segregated city, and my parents were civil rights liberals. I think that this came out of uh, their religious tradition. We're Jewish, and I think that my parents, they were used to knowing what it was like to be in a minority in a, in a small southern town, a religious minority. And I think this really contributed to their commitment to civil rights for other people. And um, so they kind of got me involved in it. And uh, I really kind of never looked back from that. I, I went to my first civil rights demonstration when I was 13. Mm -hmm. uh, it was for the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And, and then since then, those have been the issues that have really driven me. And I want to uh, continue to work on those issues because they, you know, race is still the dominant overlay in American society in many ways. And the search for racial justice has still got to be, uh, it's got to be at the center of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And so viewing the issues at city council through a racial justice lens and seeking racial and economic justice for everybody here in Durham, um, it's our job. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it, it's still my, 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 it's still my top commitment and top priority in terms of the work I do. But it, it comes naturally to me because it's been such a part of my life for a long time. Mm, speaks volumes. So, Mayor, what is your vision for making those themes a reality here in Durham? Yeah. Well, I think that one of the things that we are so fortunate about is that Durham is growing. We have this, we, we are in a period of newfound prosperity. And for most of us, that's amazing. I mean, there are great jobs at Duke, at Central, at RTP in downtown Durham now, you know, thousands of new fabulous jobs for people, it's wonderful. And people are pouring into this city to take those jobs. 20 people are moving here a day. What's happening is it's not happening for everybody. So maybe 20% of our residents are not sharing in this newfound prosperity and most of them are people of color. Mm -hmm. And we have to change that. 
and that is the work that we need to do. We're in a big national economy. We can't change it all by ourselves, but we can make a difference. And bringing those people into this prosperity has got to be our, our top commitment. Mm -hmm. So what do you see as the top challenges for that? Yeah. Well, what I think about is, and, and when I think about our work, I think about several things. One is the city is working now on an economic development plan for Durham. And the, the theme of that is going to be shared prosperity. Mm -hmm. It's not just enough to bring good jobs into Durham. We need to be doing that, but we need to make sure that our residents are able to get those good jobs. That's really important. So that's not just what the, 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 the work of city government can do, but what our public schools can do, mm -hmm. and what our private employers can do, and what our job training and job readiness and connecting people to, job to do, jobs can do. Making our buses our bus system so good and so accessible and so inexpensive that people can get to these good jobs. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, providing people with affordable housing. I mean, what we know is that with all these people moving in, it's driving up the price of housing. Gentrification is a real f powerful force. Mm -hmm. That's a real problem. And we've got to be providing, doing as, as the best job of, of, as we can of maintaining affordability of housing and providing new affordable housing. Mm -hmm. It's hard, it's very expensive to do it, but we have to do it. And we can do it, and we will do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think so many people have the mindset that, you know, I've achieved this, I've gotten this, mm -hmm. and it's up to everybody else to do yeah. the same. Mm -hmm. How do you overcome that, Mayor? Yeah. In Durham, that's pretty easy. What I see is a community that is committed to the shared prosperity of all of our residents. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll give you an example. We've passed now a two cents on the tax rate for affordable housing. If you own a $200,000 house in Durham, you're paying $40 a year to help build a house for somebody else. I have not heard a single complaint about that. People want to make that kind of commitment. And you see it in this very robust democracy that we have that can sometimes be hard on us, uh, that people come down to City Hall with lots of opinions and ideas. But it's great. You know, the fact that people are participating in Durham's democracy like they are and have so many opinions and ideas uh, is really good for our city. And so I see that as, as a strength. Uh, and maybe not every community has it, but we have it. And uh, we need to embrace it and, and enjoy it, even when it's difficult. Uh -huh. yeah. So given all that, what do you think the most pressing or the next most pressing priority for Durham is? I think there's a couple of things in addition to these issues of racial and economic justice. One is just growth, growth. and how to manage it. So, as I say, we're growing at a tremendous rate. You know, we're going to have 140,000 more people living here in Durham in 20 years. Think about that. Our roads are already crowded. So, one of the main things that I think we have to be really committed to, it's expensive, it's difficult, it's a long-term project, but is a light rail system. Mm -hmm. And we are really pushing forward on that regionally. We have jumped over the, one of the two most important federal hurdles. We're into the federal engineering phase. We can get into federal construction in a few months. We need some state funding to help push this along, but we are, we are taxing ourselves to do it locally. Mm -hmm. We will be able to build a $2.5 billion light rail system. We will have the funding in hand that we'll pay for over many years. It will be 18 miles. It will go from North Carolina Central University, downtown Durham, over to Duke University Hospital, down 15501 to 54, and all the way into UNC Hospital. Mm -hmm. and this will be the first backbone of a regional public transit system. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we'll be sending a commuter rail down I-40 to Raleigh mm -hmm. on the existing tracks. We have to do that. We have to create a good transit system. And we have to have a really fabulous bus system as well so that people are able to get around Durham outside of their cars, ride bikes, walk, great bus system, and rail transit. Mm -hmm. 50 years from now, can you imagine if we don't have those things? Right. We're going to be stuck in traffic forever. And we have to stop thinking about tomorrow. It's more thinking 50 years down the really road. It really is. I yeah. mean, that's one of the things I've learned in city government. Uh -huh. um, and I'm sure you as well, having worked in city government for a while. These are long-term projects. Right. Um, you, you know, the, 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 the thinking really is 20, 30. You know, our water system is a great example. Right. We're planning for a water system for people next 50, 100 years mm -hmm. to have the water available to people. Even as our, as our region grows, we have to have the water available. When you turn on your tap, you want it to come out as much as you want. You want it to be clean. You want it to taste good. 
You want it to look good, you want it to be as plentiful as you want, and you want it to be cheap. Right. Well, we have to provide a really good water system to do that. It's expensive to, to create that. So it takes a lot of foresight, but we're doing it. So with everything going on in Durham, great things. What do you like to brag about when people ask you about Durham? We embrace that, that very robust, wide open democracy that we have and every voice is heard, that's one. Um, another is that we talk about a lot, which is really true, is our diversity. I just saw a report from the Washington Post that Durham is, I think it was fourth in the country over the last five years of people moving here Percentage-wise, in comparison to the size of our city, we are getting fourth, the fourth most growth of any city in the country. But what was interesting about it, some cities, for example, there was talked about several cities in Colorado, are getting, are getting uh, people moving in from only one demographic. In that case, it was white people. Mm -hmm. We are getting people moving in from all four of the demographics that they measured, which is African American, Hispanic, Asian American, and white. And all across all those diverse populations, people are moving in here to Durham. So that's the other thing. This diversity that we have and that we love and that we embrace is real. Mm -hmm. And I got a, 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 uh, 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 an email yesterday from people from the Sikh temple here in Durham mm -hmm. and wanting to meet. I'm meeting actually today with people of the Baha'i faith, a little later today. Mm -hmm. We have everybody here in Durham and we need to embrace that and love it. Mm -hmm. And then there's some other things that we need to brag about, our restaurants. Yes. Definitely. Are amazing. I mean, let's face it, Beverly. We have the best restaurants anywhere, and um, and I love to I love to eat in them. <laughs> so, you know, there are things like that that are great as well. I mean, there's so many great things about Durham: the the, the tech startups, the entrepreneurial economy that we have, um, the 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 work we're doing to try to make that entrepreneurship inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, racially and and uh, racially in, in terms of race and gender to make that to make that entrepreneurial and work inclusive is really something we should be proud of. So there's so much about Durham. I love Durham. I've been here for, gosh, 48 years now. Went to, came to Duke in 69, and there's so much to love and be proud of here. There is, definitely. Yeah. I totally agree. Now, you're working with mostly new council members. Um, what do you want people watching this show to know what they can expect from all of you? Yeah, we definitely are a young city council. Uh, I'm not young. Uh, but the rest of them are quite young, which is great. Uh, when I first got on the council six years ago, there was 70 years of experience sitting in those chairs. This new council comes in, there's only 10 years of experience and six of them is me. Um, but here's what I'll tell you <laughs> about different our- Different situation. It's very different. <laughs> but here's what I'll tell you about our new members. Just like the members who are retiring from the council, who just retired from the council, and the members who came before, and all the people who have participated in making this this city, this government, and this, this wonderful city that mm -hmm. we've created. These council members care just as much. They're just as smart. They're just as creative. They're just as big hearted. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I have seen is a real sense of collegiality of wanting to work together what's good for what's good for Durham. Mm -hmm. We're not always gonna agree with each other, but that's okay. And one of the things I learned from Mayor Bell, my amazing predecessor is, it was never personal. Mm -hmm. He was always, you know, it was just an issue. One issue led to the next. If you didn't vote with him, he never held it against you. And he made that kind of sense of collegiality mm -hmm. and the fact that, that you know, we're working together and that we're a team working together. He made that so real uh -huh. and that's something that I hope to continue. That's great. That sounds good. So Mayor, we were curious about what Durham residents really wanted to know as you begin your time here in office. So we asked them su to submit their questions on Facebook mm -hmm. and Twitter, uh -huh. social media, mm -hmm. all the way of doing things now. Uh -huh. and so I'm gonna read to you just a few of those questions mm -hmm. that we received. Uh, Susan Gore Vitayero, mm -hmm. hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh -huh. wanted to know what you're gonna do about gun crimes. Wow, so this is a really important issue in Durham and it's a really hard issue. Mm -hmm. Um, we have, uh, uh, we had over 200 people shot in Durham last year. Shot, not, actually, not just shot at, but actually shot and wounded. We, uh, we had 24 of those people died. This is a serious problem, as it is across the nation. The good news is that over the last 25 years, we've seen a tremendous drop in our violent crime rate. W tremendous drop in Durham, as well, again, as across the nation. What we really need to be doing is we're really prohibited by the legislature. The legislature requires us to allow guns in our, in our parks, in our restaurants, and even in bars. So 
it's really hard to get a handle on gun crime when we are prohibited from limiting guns. But there are still a lot of things we can do. And I'll tell you just a couple of them. Okay. One, our police department can really work to build trust in the community. And our new chief, C.J. Davis, has done a wonderful job of these trust building measures, which include community policing. It includes uh, the racial equity training that our police department's undergoing, the de-escalation training that they're doing, the, the liaisons that she's uh, appointed to various communities here in Durham. Those are trust building measures and they can help because the police can't stop crime alone. It's got to be the community and that community has to be bought into it. So that's one. And then there's specific strategies that the police department can employ. And then finally, they're the long-term things. I mean, that's the big thing. An education, a job, you know, all the things that make it possible for people to escape the, the pull of drugs and guns and that kind of thing. So that's our long-term work, uh, and uh, it's really hard work, but we can do it. We have to do it. And so, great question. I wish it had an easy answer. It's a hard answer, but we need to do the work. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a community as well. It is. Definitely. Elisa at Beloved Dharma asks, mm -hmm. what ideas does Mayor Shul have about helping Durham to retain its character? So there are a couple of things I would say about that. One is, in terms of what I think of as, as I was talking about before, our kind of uh, small d democracy, that part of the character, that's taking care of itself. Uh -huh. I mean, a thousand vo voices are being heard here around here all the time. But I think we do have an issue with a gentrification, as I spoke about earlier, and I expect that that's what the question is getting at. We want to make sure that artists and small businesses and you know residents of of, of all uh, you know races, creeds, and colors, to use the old terminology, can live and work in Durham and in downtown Durham and in the central city. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we have to provide affordable housing. We have to help people get good jobs. We have to help people get to those good jobs so that we can have a, a city that is, you know, as especially centrally, that's as diverse as we want it to be. And that's the way I think we'll keep our character. It's hard. I, I want to emphasize all these things are hard. They're not easy. They're expensive. They're hard. But we have to do them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, of course, we always want to know what the children think. Uh -huh. So we got some questions uh, on Twitter uh -huh. from a very involved group of second graders uh -huh. at Durham Academy. Fantastic. Okay. Uh -huh. JS wanted to know, was being mayor a dream that you had for your life? No, it, it hasn't been a dream for my whole life. But for the last few years, I've been saying that once Mayor Bell uh, decided to step down, I would like a shot at it. Mm -hmm. And because I hope that I can do a good job, that I think I can. And... So, uh, not a lifelong dream, but a recent dream. Okay. GB wanted to know, what has been the hardest thing about being mayor so far? Yeah. Two things. One I spoke about earlier, just this sense of, oh my gosh, the number of people that want to see me. Uh -huh. but I'll tell you something else. I wouldn't say this is hard, but it's, it's constantly with me as this sense of responsibility for the city that I love. Uh -huh. And to now have the responsibility to lead that city in a different way, it, it, weighs, it weighs heavily. Something I feel very seriously, and I, I want to do a great job of it, and I, I, I will put my heart and soul into it, but it, it, it is a responsibility that I feel every day. Uh -huh. One more question. Yeah. E.N. wants to know if you have any hobbies. I do. Uh, I'm a runner. I, uh -huh. I run distance. I run slowly now, but I run distance. Uh, I read fiction incessantly. Uh -huh. uh, I read history as well, but I'm, I, I'm, uh, I really I love to do that. I what cook. kind of fiction? Um, I like historical fiction a historical. lot, but also I like a lot of different things. I like mysteries. Um, I like, I, I just, I mean, I have some favorite novelists, you know. I love John le Carre and I love Philip Roth, and I, but I also love William Faulkner and Herman Melville, you know. I mean, I, yeah. I read... Uh, I read a lot. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a professor. Yeah, that's right. So. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, I guess the other, th I, like, I love to cook. Uh-huh. Yeah, so Didn't I, know I that. do a lot of cooking, yeah. And, um, and I love to be mo with my wife, Leah. Mm -hmm. I love to hang out with her, chilling, and uh, going out to eat in Durham's great restaurants. Uh -huh. So those are some of the things I like to do. Great life, great life. So we've come to the end of the show, and I wanted to ask you, is there anything you want viewers to know about you and this job? Yeah. That I haven't asked. Well, I, th I think maybe it's what I just said, which mm -hmm. is I just want people to know that um, I, 
I, I know that this is a, a big responsibility and that I will work hard every single day to do it well mm -hmm. and that I will be listening to all the voices that I possibly can and that I believe in the greatness of the city and want to try to help it thrive in every single way that I can. And the other thing I want people to know is how much support I have felt. Uh, it's not just the selfies, mm -hmm. uh, but the amazing outpouring of support I have felt. I know that people want me to succeed because they want Durham to succeed. And that's a beautiful feeling. Great. Mayor, thank you so much for joining Always me. fun, Beverly. Great I to see you. I know how busy you are. Oh, so. it's great to be here. Thank I love you it. Again. Thank you. Invite me back. I will, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, that does it for City Life. Don't forget to follow us on social media, watch us on Durham Television Network, and on YouTube, and listen to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham.